welcome to the .org Thought Corner. Last time we had Brian Timbalik talking about DNS abuse and the things that .org is doing and the people that we're working with in order to combat that issue along with some other things. And this time we have the fabulous Mary. She is the VP of HR here at .org and we're going to be talking about culture at .org. Fun. This is going to be a good one. It is. And I'm only doing this in the hopes that it goes viral and doubles my Instagram followers. <laughs> I currently have four Instagram followers. <laughs> you got four now? And three of them are my children. So, oh, wait, am I the fourth one? Then? Probably. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe we need to do some more work on Mary's Instagram. Bit, yeah. Um, okay, so, I mean, how was your weekend and everything? What's going on? It was good. I hung with the, the three children the that three? I referenced. Yeah, I have three in college. I so. got left out. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. Back to the grind. Good. Okay, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and get into it. So, what drew you to .org? When the opportunity to, came to work for .org, um, I was obviously impressed that it was a mission-based organization. Um, I had worked in federal contracting for years and had never worked for a nonprofit, so I thought, that's interesting. Um, and I'd never worked in this industry, so it was a lot for me to learn, a lot that was new. Um, but what really sold it to me was coming on site and meeting the staff. Um, I love the idea of working for a small team. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 34 employees, so we're a small group. Um, but it was the, the level of commitment, I think, um, of the team, how much people loved what they did and were passionate about the work that they did. It just lit me up, and I thought, I need to be a part of that team. Because you got lit and you walked through the door. So she got do. lit. <laughs> okay, um, and so how has working with .org or how has .org, the value, the core values, the ones that we created recently, the ones that were put in place historically, um, just the organization as a whole, how has it impacted the work that you do with um, HR? Like how has it changed how you create policies and form You make HR sound everything? so exciting. Oh, you um, know, I'm <laughs> trying, that's my job, social. <laughs> you know, HR is challenging uh, because Although we influence a lot, um, an HR department, uh, an HR consultant has very little direct control. Mm -hmm. um, the work we do is done by influencing and encouraging others. Mm -hmm. And so you can have the greatest policy, performance management, engagement, ideas in the world, but if you don't have a leadership team that really embraces it and believes it mm -hmm. and lives it, um, it's going to fall flat and I've seen that time and time again in my career So, you know when I, I joined PIR I had all these great ideas and I thought oh this will be fun We'll give it a try um, Thinking that hey, maybe half of it will take because you know leadership's going to be busy. Yeah, and instead I found a group of people who um, Not only embraced it and supported it, but were hungry for it and pushing for more um, and I think that was really the genesis of the evolution of our culture over mm -hmm. the past year or so um, I don't like the idea of culture change because that makes it sound like it's a it happens in an instant and it's a decision that you make and that's not the case. Um, it's something that evolves over time. For PIR, um, you know, we've we went through some significant changes over the past 18 months. Um, we had some significant changes at the leadership level, um, bringing in a couple of new people, creating a couple of new roles uh, that weren't there before, um, and as part of that. One of our first efforts was to say, we need to stop and take a look at our core values mm -hmm. and make sure, you know, they hadn't been evaluated in a couple of years, we had some, but make sure that they still reflect who we are. So we did that. We spent several months um, conducting small workshops with small groups of employees to figure out what is it that makes us unique? Mm -hmm. What is it that makes us special? Um, there are a lot of things we do well, but, but what is it that allows us to stand out? And collectively, you know, throughout these workshops, the same themes were evolving. Um, didn't matter which group I was talking to, it was really the same four components. Mm -hmm. um, and the first one was bold stewardship. That came out loud and clear. Obviously, we're a mission-driven organization, and one of the reasons people love working here is a sense of purpose. Um, and so we came up with stewardship, but not just stewardship, because stewardship is taking care of, you know, what's your area of responsibility. But the idea of bold stewardship, um, it's not passive, it's active. Um, and so that was our first core value. Mm -hmm. um, we developed three more, unwavering integrity, and the idea that we're going to do the right thing even if it's not popular, not profitable, um, it's still the right thing. Mm -hmm. 
another one of our core values is relentless commitment. Um, this idea that we, we don't give up. There's always room to improve. Um, even when things are going well, you can still continue to push and grow. Um, and the last one, and this, this is my favorite, I think this is really what... It this has is to the, be your favorite. This is the guiding light <laughs> of our core values. Um, the idea of honoring people. Mm -hmm. And we struggled with just the right words um, for that theme, but that is what's most evident, and I think what people see when they come in and meet with our team. There is such a level of respect, but it's not just respect. It's acknowledging that people bring the, their whole selves to work. You're a whole person, and you bring <clears throat> you know, whatever um, concerns you have, or interests, or hobbies, or what's going on with your kids, or all of that comes to work with you. And not only should we acknowledge it, um, but we need to leverage it. Mm -hmm. We need That's what makes us amazing. Um, so that was an important core value for us to focus on. And you know, a lot of organizations, not organizations specifically, but like companies, they say they want you to bring your whole self to work, mm -hmm. but then they really don't want you to bring your whole self <laughs> to work. Once they need to know all the parts. Uh-huh, you know. they just want a third of the whole right. self. Um, so how has your philosophies changed um, based on the work that we do here, your philosophies mm. of like doing your HR? Yeah, great question. So, so coming from a, a federal contracting background, um, when you use the word diversity, what that means to them is, you know, quotas and headcounts and yeah. have we represented all the major groups and all the protected classes and um, that's important, it's necessary, but that's a floor, not a ceiling. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your bare minimum. And that comes from an attitude of, um, you know, I need to make sure everybody's treated fairly. And that's fine. Um, but I think being in this organization where we serve a global population, I mean, our customers, our stakeholders are really from every walk of life, mm -hmm. that the attitude toward diversity is completely different. It comes from a, a place of humility, recognizing um, I don't know everything. There's a lot I can learn, and I can learn it most from people who are different from me in one way or the other, um, socioeconomic background, a profession, um, you know, just do you, do you have family, do you not have family, Culture, do you have kids, everything. all, so all of those check boxes, you know, race, religion, national, all of those things, um, but also just how did you get to be the person that you are, mm -hmm. so if you have an attitude of humility of, there's a lot I can learn, then it's not about checking a box, it's about really growing the capability of your organization mm -hmm. um, and using that as a, co a competitive advantage. Competitive advantage. All right. I got all the buzzwords. Yeah. <laughs> Check them off the list. How would you describe the culture of Dotworth? Like you kind of went into it, but like, how is it different than what you've experienced before coming here to, like you've already said, like it's already different when you walk through the door, but like now that you've been here for two years, yes? Yeah, just three? Two, two, almost two and a half. Okay, then how would you like the feeling? How does it feel versus how it felt in other organizations? And yeah. no shade to the other organizations. Oh, they're lovely. Uh, but good, <laughs> good, fair question. Um, I, I think part of it is I personally feel I can bring my whole self to work. Yes. So there is a sense of authenticity that people have here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can be my authentic self and that in turn invites other people be their authentic selves. Mm -hmm. um, there is, I think, what's different about PIR is um, we are a nonprofit, yes, but we are also they're just highly trained professionals here. I mean, these folks know the industry, they know their jobs, they're good at their jobs. Um, so there is a level of professionalism, but then you also have just the, the human aspect, mm -hmm. which is so refreshing. Um, there's a lot of companies who talk about work-life balance. Um, talk about it's difficult to live out. Yes. It really is. And if I think, you talk about it, you have to be about it. That's right. That's a quote, you guys. That's a hashtag. It is. Talk <laughs> about it, be about it. So what about diversity? Um, how has working with .org impacted how you approach it? And like, do you think it's more important because we are .org? Or do you mm -hmm. think it you kind of can go about it the same way that you've done before? Yeah, like I said, there's two schools of thought. It's either you're checking a box um, or it's something that you truly understand the value of. Um, I, I think my experience here with .org is different because, like I said, our stakeholders, our community, our everyone, you know, the really the only common thing that pulls us together is we want to do good 
you mm -hmm. know, but every, other than that, it's every walk of life. We have a board of directors who is very diverse um, and very, you know, passionate about our team and involved in our team. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think, again, it's, it's less about um, some formal process that you go through and more about how can we talk to each other? Mm -hmm. How can we try to understand each other to leverage it as, as an advantage? One of the things that we do is um, we each take, you know, personal assessments. Um, I'm not going to name the name because, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know if they care if we support them. But um, <laughs> we do this. We have a wonderful tool that we use that helps us identify our own work styles um, to develop a, a personal awareness of how we communicate yeah. and how we structure work. And once you're aware of yourself. Um, you work so much more effectively with others. So it's something that we focus on. Understand your differences mm -hmm. um, and then leverage that. Don't, don't just tolerate them. Um, don't ignore them. But now that we know about them, how can we you know, adjust? It's kind of like a moment of truth. Like when you level up and you get to know yourself um, inside out, you kind of like heighten your senses of, from all areas. Absolutely. So it's the same Self awareness is key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's difficult to do, but you know, we try. they help us. So thank you, Mary. I think we are at time, and I appreciate you for sitting and talking with me about the culture. Of My pleasure. It wasn't too painful. <laughs> I should have asked more questions. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. All right, guys. Till next time. See ya.